tonight. I would like to emphasise this is a key meeting, and I therefore request that everyone present, including the public, treat this meeting accordingly, which will enable the business to be dealt with affectionately. Effectively. The use of social media and filming the report and proceeding is permitted during the council meeting. This does not extend to film of members of the public and anyone wishing to film the proceedings are also particularly directed to the very sensitive issue of filming children without the express permission of their parents. Okay. Right, distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, fellow councillors, welcome to Liverpool Town Hall tonight. First, I would like to, I wish to thank Chris, Jeanette and Tony for their support all for this year and that is to support me in the most wonderful and supportive way that anyone could wish for. That goes for the, our committee services who work tires, tirelessly and affectionately towards the uh, uh, councils of this city and me as Lord Mayor. Right, I've been on a journey, right, and the greatest journey that I could actually talk about because part of that journey was meeting the people of this city and the volunteer work that goes on this city by the, by the people of this city. People who work in hospitals, in prisons, in elderly people's homes, in community centres, people who look after their neighbours, people who fundraise for communities, fundraise for charities. They do a fantastic job. And when you say to, uh, to, to the people what impact they make on this city, they act very surprisingly. They don't realise the effect of the way that they have on people's lives and on this city. The other, the other people uh, I, I would like to talk about is uh, our faith groups. The tremendous way that the faith groups are doing in this city, the unity and, and the peace is tremendous. I have met quite a lot of our, our different faiths and I have to say I've been made most welcome. I've had a great time with Bishop Paul. I've had a fantastic time with Tristan. I call him the road runner. Starts talking day, mumbles and says to our day, you don't know what he said, but he doesn't mumble. But thank you, thank you. Bishop Tom, thank you for your time. Um, and the work that you do for this city and the people of this city is tremendous. I'd like to also talk about the young men and women in our services, uh, the RAF, our naval officers and our army. When we meet these young people um, and the work they're doing, not only in this, in, in, in this country, they are the peacemakers that are deployed out to all the other countries in the world and they're keeping peace in those countries not at war keeping peace and at very very proud moments of meeting most of our service our service men and women in my role i've had the honor to meet some wonderful people jean-luc eric lynch phil redmond ben Beats. Maki de Mandela, Tweeny Mandela, Judge Clem Goldstone, Judge Ian Goldwyn. A lot of these people that have a lot of impact on this city and on, on this city in, in a fantastic way, whether it be through writing, whether it be through history, whether it be through the faith groups. I've had a wonderful time meeting each and every one of them. Royalty. I met them all. Charles, Camilla, William, Edward, his wife, Sophie, all very nice. <laughs> Visitors from all over the world. America, India, South America, China, 
the other countries all come and visit here and view and, and love when they meet you, the people of this city. We had visitors from different parts of, of our country, Great Britain, that have been here. Um, and they say about the vibrance of the city and how we sell the city and how we always impact on the good things that we're doing in our city. And I had a group from Leicester and they said, how do you do it? How are you doing what you do? Can you bottle it and sell it? So I said, well, I don't think I'll get Mayor Anderson in a bottle. No disrespect, Mayor Anderson. I don't think I'll get you in a bottle. I said, and I don't think Liverpool wants to sell them at the moment. I think we want to keep them. I've met young people as well, students from all over the world. Again, America, Asia, China, South America, Great Britain, Europe. And they always ask me a question. What's the most important thing would be in our lives? And I said, education most important, but there's two lots of education. There's the, the academic side of education, and then it's the life skills, and it's the and how you present yourself, that type of education, education of life. And I tell them the story about, because I was a youth worker, twice a year we used to have uh, students, uh, they used to do 12 week placements. And I had a young woman, and she, came and she said, this is what I want to do for 12 weeks. I said, yeah. She said, can we, is there your budget? I said, I've got some money there. Can we have a residential? I said, you certainly can. So she said to me, I'm gay. So I said, not a problem. She said, do I tell the young people? So I said, no, let the young people, let them get to know you, who you are. So four weeks, one of the young people said, have you got a boyfriend? She said, no, I've got a girlfriend. Oh, so you're gay? Yes. So the weight was pushed to one side and she talked about her life of coming out being gay, about homophobia, about what's acceptable and what's not acceptable and how to address yourself. So the young people did that project for that night and then they went on to have uh, the residential. And at the end of the 12 weeks, there was tears and snots and everything because the young people loved her and she loved them. And she said, she came back and she said, I got a good uh, uh, a result and a good uh, thing for that piece of work. She said, but you lent me something. I said, yeah. I said, but you taught those young people something. I said, you showed them that the questions they asked you, you answered them in a respectful way. I said, an honest way. And you took their questions that way. And you, they took your answers in an honest and respected way. Because what happened? with you and that young group, you learn to trust. And that project came out as trust, honesty, respect, something we could learn about. So, Mayor Anderson, thank you for this journey. It's been fantastic. I've loved every minute of it, but I'm tired. I have to, I have to thank my husband Brian, he's has to live on sandwiches sometimes, but he can't eat. I bumped into uh, Rondo Denier and he went, have you been busy? I said, I've been cleaning and ironing. And he said, let them do it. I went, let them in my kitchen. Let them in my eye. I said, thank you. But he's been a tremendous support. My daughter, Jenny, Lady Mayoress, when a uh, first event, she walked into the room and I thought, she walked around, she spoke to people, she introduced herself and I thought, where did I get here from? Me. <laughs> That's where I got here from. My little lady mayoress, Amelia, who's been a big part uh, uh, of this year with us, 
and she's been with us uh, giving the awards out of a bouquet of flowers and some certificates and uh, badges. But she's been she's enjoyed a year and it's actually she's got a nice builder. I still think she thinks Joe your cafe's on the fourth floor of the Q and R. So thank you, uh, councillors, for your support. Thank you for everybody in this chamber. I've over I over entertained her over the year. But what we're going to have now is another Lord Mayor, a magnificent Lord Mayor, and I know he's going to do the city proud, like the city did me proud, and me the city proud. Thank you very much. Thank you. for the Office of Lord Mayor 2019-2020. Lord Mayor, can I uh, move that Councillor Peter Brennan uh, be elected Lord Mayor for the ensuing year 2019-2020? It's also great 
great to see some of your friends here from across the pond and relations and I know how much that means to them to see you uh, being a Lord Mayor of the famous city of Liverpool. As I said, I know on behalf of the Labour group we're delighted that you're in this position and that you're going to be our Lord, 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 Lord Mayor for the next 12 months and on behalf of the whole Labour group we wish you well. My Lord Mayor, it gives me great pleasure to second the motion that's been moved by the elected Mayor of Liverpool. I am one of those people guilty as charged who's known you for a very long time. Regrettably, on the other side of the chamber. But uh, and I say this on the instructions of Erica, so I wasn't quite sure what to say, but Erica told me what to say uh, today. Uh, and that she has remarked in all the time she was on the council, or all the time I'm on the council, is that sometimes politics matters here, but usually it doesn't. And sometimes we overplay the party political role and forget that we're all here for one purpose. We're all here to serve the people of Liverpool. I salute you as a fine human being, and I know that my uh, colleague, Councillor Nathanson, was really touched by the way you supported her when her father died early this year. I support you as one of those very special people. And I have to admit that I'm not one that I'd like to have been, that's actually a born Scouser. I'm only an adopted Scouser. But as the Mayor says, Liverpool is written right the way through you. I congratulate you on being a socialist, that perhaps we don't always agree eye to eye quite on some of uh, what that means. But in particular, I congratulate you for your service as a member of this council. Year in, year out, looking after the needs of your various wards, because you have represented more than uh, Old Swan, and looking forward to dealing with things for those groups of people who you hold in particular regard, and that is, of course, the young people of this city. And I well remember going to an event uh, with Erica when she was the Lord Mayor at the Fire Service Training Centre when you were participating in a programme to help young people from disadvantaged backgrounds begin to get qualifications. And your care and affection for those young people just beamed out of you like the sunshine for a time. So it's a pleasure to support this nomination. Perhaps this is also an opportunity for all of us to reflect on what councillors are about and what we should be doing. This isn't about flag waving, it isn't about doing things on Twitter, it's about working together wherever we can. It's, work, it's about minimising the differences we will have necessitated have necessity now. But we're remembering we're all here for the one purpose, to move this city forward, to protect those in most need, and to make sure this city has a great and sustainable future. My love for our second. Peter, uh, a few years ago when I was a member of the Taxi Licensing Committee. That's a good meeting to get to know people because it can be very, very, very long indeed. So I did get to know Peter quite well at the time and I got to know a thoroughly decent guy. As has already been said, somebody who absolutely lives for this city, who is completely passionate for Liverpool and also somebody with an absolutely cracking sense of humour. So I think you've got all the qualities to represent Liverpool wonderfully as Lord Mayor. I think you do an amazing job and uh, you're a worthy successor to Christine. who's been a, a, a fantastic Lord Mayor as well. Thank you. My Lord Mayor, on behalf of the Liberal Party Group and your neighbours in Tunebrook and Stonycroft, uh, I've had the great privilege of working with people on many committees licensing, community safety, and uh, I have to say we've dealt with some very controversial issues with a lot of precision, uh, articulate, not ducking issues, and objectively. 
Um, but I think on these occasions, it's always nice to look at some of the more light-hearted sides of being a counsellor. And um, in every profession, you get people who do the job, you get people who do the job well, and you get people who do the job as a vocation. And I think your role as a board councillor has been as a vocation. And one of the more colourful um, episodes of that, I would recall, was on the planning committee. And Peter had to give an articulated account of monitoring a local massage parlour in St. Oswald Street. So for the benefit of friends and family, it was a totally professional elected member's role, in case there's any doubt. And I think Peter and I, I was sitting on the planning committee that day, we're getting incredibly frustrated uh, with that particular class of council officer called legal advisors. And they were trying to avoid us making up a decision. Uh, lawyers are very good at telling you why I shouldn't make a decision. And um, we bit the bullet and said, the evidence is clear, the police evidence is clear, but I think the most overwhelming evidence was the very uh, close account of monitoring the mass of the movement by people that morning. And I just wondered whether, um, whether the uh, St. Noble Street monitoring would be quite the same if he was wearing a mayoral chamber, chair, chair, um, mayor, mayoral chain. I think it might have given the game away. But as fun as a friend, and someone who's enjoyed every committee working with you, we look forward to welcoming you and Tube Brook as the Lord Mayor. We look forward to supporting work on Mayor. Well done, Peter, and good fun. The Lord Mayor, you put forward Peter Glenn Council. Is that agreed? Peter Anthony Brennan, having been elected to the office of Lord Mayor of the City of Liverpool, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. I undertake to observe the code of conduct which is expected of members of the City Council.
Can I just say uh, a massive thank you to the retired and Lord Mayor, Councillor Christine Banks. She's been an absolute uh, godsend to me in the role as Deputy Lord Mayor this past year. And uh, some, some, of the, some of the events I went to, uh, I wasn't looking forward to. Uh, I won't name them, but Christine said, oh, you can do it. You do this, you do that, you do the other. And what she had done the year before as deputy, uh, she certainly pointed me in the right direction. And then everywhere I went after that, people said, hello, <coughs> deputy Lord Mayor, how's Christine? Uh, because wherever I went, she was known. Everybody knew her, and everybody said how warm, how generous she was, and how down to where she was uh, with them. And, uh, and, and I can honestly say that because Christine is somebody I've known most of my life. Uh, and there's times when we are together, we might be able to drink a few of us. And I do tell people that she used to be my dinner lady, uh, but she really isn't that old. But we do, we, we do have a, a strong affinity because both our families grew up in the same area and certainly knew one another and worked together, socialised together and that, that, that trait has gone on um, with myself and Christine uh, right up until then I just gave the, uh, the badge then. So I'd like to say Christine, uh, Brian, Jenny and Amelia, I hope you have a good rest now after what's been quite a long, quite a Busy, busy year for you. And just to say that wherever I go, I'm sure people will still be asking, how is Christine? Because uh, you have had an impact out there. You have had an impact on your city. And I'm sure uh, your mum and dad will be so proud. Thank you very much. I'm not going to uh, speak too long, you will be glad to know, uh, because we do have uh, a council meeting straight after this. But what I'd just like to say, it's an absolute honour and a privilege to be standing here uh, today as Lord Mayor of this great city. And I don't think anyone could bestow any greater thing on, on a person than to, to ask them to be the Lord Mayor and to be Lord Mayor of your city. I need to thought that all them years ago, growing up in the streets of Everton, uh, Langsdale Street, no less, as a kid, running around Langsdale Street, uh, that I was one day be the Lord Mayor, but strange things have happened and there we are. And all I'd like to say is, I'd like to thanks, thank everybody who's encouraged me and supported me, not just this last year, but I know I need lots of help, I need, lo I know, need lots of support from, from many of you. And for those of you that, the four leaders that spoke and said such nice things about me, uh, I'd just like to say thank you very much. I hope that uh, in, in my work in, in, in the council, and certainly in my work with Lord Mayor, I'll be able to cross all political divides, religious divides, um, any, any issues that are brought forward, forward to me, I hope I can treat sensitively uh, and with some compassion. So I'd like to thank you all for, for supporting me this last year, and I will leave that off, but more, more than ever I'd like to thank my two board colleagues, uh, Councillor Joanne Calvert and Councillor Gary Miller. Uh, Dave. They agreed and they, they, they were delighted that I was um, chosen to put my name forward um, for Lord Mayor and they've been tremendous and they have got to pick up the cudgel in, uh, on my behalf and, and do additional work because I'm not going to be around as much. I will try to be in, in, in the ward as much as I can um, because I do feel that being in the ward, seeing the people, seeing the issues will keep me grounded, will keep me very much grounded. And I'd like to thank the people of Old Swap who this couple of weeks ago 
uh, went out and put a cross by my knee and voted me in for the third time as one of the local councillors. And in order for them to do that, gives me the chance to be Lord Mayor. Because it could have been quite risky if I wouldn't have got in as voted in in, in Old Swan two weeks ago, I wouldn't have been the Lord Mayor now. But thank you to the good people of Old Swan. So those of you that are here, uh, do please pass on the way that for me. I'd also like to pay great thanks to someone who's agreed to be the Lady Mayoress. I'd like to thank Sharon Sullivan, former Lord Mayor, former colleague of the Council, who brings a wealth of experience, a wealth of knowledge, not just in the city, locally, ward level. Her commitment is second to none, and she will bring that commitment to her role as. She will bring that to the role as, as my roommate and uh, I'm sure we're due to have some real good times. I think we'll have some different times, but I think what we will do, we, I'm sure we will, we'll, we'll, we'll put our total commitment behind whatever's put before us. And I can learn an awful lot from, from Sharon because Sharon and Christine come from that era and then communities where everyone knows them. Wherever you go, you know. So Sharon, you won't be able to do any wrong because you're going to be spotted and you're going to be uh, out. And again, I'd like to just thank uh, my family, Julie, Kenzie, Leah, uh, coming from San Diego to share this with me. Also, Joyce, Jim from Tacoma, Washington, June and Gail from Alabama. They've come all that way. But what I'd like to say is there's two people that should have been there with them, and that's Joyce and Charles Brady. Um, if I would never have met them 40 years ago, I wouldn't know these good people are. So they would have been able, sadly they, they passed on. I'm going to be brief, because I know we've got to get on to this. Uh, my year, it, again, uh, I will put as much as I can to, into my year. And I've chosen, I've chosen a team, and Crispin asked me um, some time ago, what would, what would I like to have as my uh, theme for certainly the civic service and I said something around service because I do believe that and I do strongly believe that I and all us councillors are here to serve and not to be saved and we mustn't forget that and going through um, going through my work and day work and life and, and others I do, I do come across people who think um, they are more important and the people that they're here to serve and of course none of us are so service will be a theme of my year as will and, and, and councillor kemp alluded to it is young people and youth service and again i'd like to um, put as much time and effort into into that as i can which now brings me on to the three charities i've chosen um, for this year to support um, that are very dear to my heart and I have had um, lots of dialogue with them, I've met up with them, I've been fed by them, I've been entertained by them and um, they are the Washing Chinese Community Centre in Duke Street, been in existence since 1965 and I, I had the privilege to go there last year as Deputy Lord Mayor um, to see um, some of the children um, given um, certificates and presentations. And they, and, and they impressed me so much with how they just go about their, their business in their own way uh, without any force. But they work with 270 to 300 young children every Sunday in the school to teach 
those young children, um, their culture around Cantonese and Mandarin, and they impressed me so much. And I think since 1965, they've been trying to uh, get the building up to scratch, and it's been like it's been like the fourth bridge. To them. They've been doing it up, and some of the elders that are still working on that building were only young men in 1965 when we started. So I hope that we can raise as much funds and finances to help the Washington Community Centre continue in their fantastic work. And a new charity is the Anthony Walker Foundation. And this is a, this is this is a charity and an organisation that I volunteered to, to become a member of the trustees probably nine, come up to ten years ago, uh, certainly before I was back on the council. And the Anthony Walker Foundation was set up in the aftermath of the racist murder of an 18-year-old young man who had his life ahead of him. A talented young man who was murdered. And the reason he was murdered because of the colour of his skin. And G. Walker and his mother and the family came together and they set up a foundation. And the foundation started off to, to promote racial harmony through education, through sports and through the arts that Anthony was very, very interested in. And Anthony would have been now probably a very, very successful lawyer because that was the path he'd chosen for it wasn't to be. But then the Anthony Walker Foundation has gone on to do other things as well. Not only, not only working with young people, it now works with people who are affected by all forms of hate crime. And we've seen an increase in hate crime um, in the region and certainly in the city since we've heard about that B word, Brexit. And we've seen an increase. So it's more important, it's vitally important that the work of the Anthony Foundation, Anthony Walker Foundation can continue, that we can get the necessary funds to continue to save the communities, to save the young people, to educate some of our young people that may be perpetrators and also to support the victims. And it's just an absolute pleasure to be a member of the board of trustees of the Anthony Walker Foundation. And then last but no means least is transforming choices. What do I say? A few years ago, uh, my councillor colleague, Ross Gladden, said, you must go along and see this, this organisation in Sefton Park. It's called Transform and Choice. And they, what they do is they were, it's a detox and rehabilitation <coughs> programme for people with alcohol problems. And to say that they are life changing is quite a miss on that because they're life saving. The people that go through their doors, I'm talking about some of the most vulnerable in our society. And after the 12 week rehab and detox program, to see that people come out and at the graduation ceremony, ceremony after 12 weeks when we celebrate their achievements that they've come out the other end and to see them and to start building their lives and go on to get jobs or go into education and some get their own flats and accommodation and it's an absolute pleasure to be able to say that transforming choice has certainly changed my life because going along to see them and they are so humble they work with some of, as I've said, some of our most vulnerable. And again, I hope that we can raise the necessary funds to help them on their journey with the people of the city. And these three, these three charities that I've chosen are three local charities. They're three Liverpool charities. And I think anything that we raise for them can only benefit them to carry on with the sterling work that each and every one of them do. And I look forward to visiting them as much as possible and attending as many of the fundraising events as I can 
and I hope I can get the support of many people in this room also. So with that in mind, I'd like to say a, a, a massive thank you, and uh, that's it. That's it. Nominations for Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you. 